こんにちは、ジャパニーズアーモのミサです。Hey guys, this is the third video for learning kanji with vocabulary. First, I want to teach you something about ninja. Female ninjas are called kunoichi. Hiragana ku, katakana no, and the kanji ichi, which means one. And when we put all these letters together, we get the kanji for woman. The kunyomi is onna, and the onyomi is jo. Yeah, so the word ku no ichi, female ninja, was actually made out of this kanji. Pretty cool, right? Like a secret code. And this kanji does look like a woman, I think. Like a pregnant woman. So just write the hiragana ku, the katakana no, and then the kanji ichi. However, calling a woman onna is actually rude. Onna sounds more like bitch. So normally we use this word to refer to a woman. Can you read it? We had the last kanji in the first kanji video. It's onna no hito, onna no hito. Kinda like female person. If you just say onna, it sounds very rough. If you are complaining about women among guys, they would call women onna. If you are pissed off about women, go ahead and use onna. In other situations, use onna no hito. Okay, let's learn how to write man. The kunyomi is otoko and the onyomi is dan. The kanji otoko is made out of two radicals. The blue radical means rice field. Ta. As the word rice field, we say tanbo. And the red radical means power or strength. The reading is chikara. If you watch enough anime, you'll realize that that's what all the villains want. Chikara. This kanji was made out of the look of a man cultivating a rice field with strong arms. Just like the word uman, onna, saying otoko is considered to be a little rude. Again, unless you are mourning about men, you might not want to use the word otoko. You could use this word when talking about men in general though. If you want to say man with some respect, you'd say otoko no hito. Again, adding no hito. Let's read this example sentence. It's ano otoko no hito wa かっこいいですね。あの男の人はかっこいいですね。えめんたまんさんさんいすんひん。ネクストカンジーイズディスえめんチャイルド。ドクヨミイズコエンドオヨミイズシ。ディスカンジーイズメイドアオフデシェイプ
it would either mean what nationality of children do you want or how many children do you want. Naturally, you'd think how many children do you want, right? Unless you're thinking about an adoption, but it's a bit weird. Yeah, so we'd read this sentence like Kodomo wa nanin hoshi desu ka? Kodomo wa nanin hoshi desu ka? How many children do you want? Next word is this. You can probably figure out the meaning as well. The first kanji is uman and the last kanji is child. Can you guess what it means? Female child. A girl. And we read it like onnanoko. Onnanoko. It is meant to refer to little girls, but is also used as any girl or uma at any age. I mean, it's a little weird to call a uma over 40 years old. Onnanoko, though. Next one. You should be able to know what this one means. It means boy. And the reading is Otoko no ko. Otoko no ko. Okay, so we learned how to write girl and boy, onna no ko, and otoko no ko. But we also have different words that mean girl and boy. Since these are compound nouns without hiragana, you'd read them with onyomis. Do you remember the onyomi for them? I'll give you some time to think. The onyomi for the kanji uman is jo, and for man it's dan, and then the kanji for child is read as shi. So joshi for girl and danshi for boy. These words are mainly used for school children to call girls and boys. Boys would refer girls as joshi, and girls would refer boys as danshi. You probably hear these words when you watch anime about school lives. We also have the word joshi ryoku. The last kanji is the same kanji or radical that is in the kanji for man. Do you remember what the radical meant? It means power. And again, since this word is a compound noun, jukugo, you need to read all the kanji in their onyomis. So it's joshi ryoku. It literally means girl power. But English girl power and Japanese girl power are quite different. In English, it means girls being independent and strong, whilst in Japanese, it means how a girl can be as feminine as possible, more of a traditional feminineness. To gain joshi ryoku, you'd learn to cook, so act sophisticated, get your man what he wants, stay clean and fit, and so on. Of course, it doesn't mean that Japanese women follow any orders by men, but being feminine is considered to be better than acting like a tough girl for Japanese girls. Next, although this one is also a compound word, you'd read it in the kunyomi. Do you still remember how to read the second kanji? It's koinu, which means puppy, child dog. Makes sense, right? You can put this ko in front of the most animals' names. For example, neko is a cat, and if you say koneko, it means kitten. Cool, huh? Next, when we combine the kanji for uman and child, we get the kanji for we like. Onna plus kodomo equals suki, and the kunyomi is su with the okurigana ki, and the onyomi is ko. Pretty sweet origin of the kanji, right? Now let's try reading this sentence. I'll give you some time to think. It anime ga suki desu ka? And it means, do you like anime? If you want to say I like something, you can put any noun instead of anime and say ga suki desu. I like something. Now, if you want to say, I love something, then you say, something ga daisuki desu. Daisuki desu. The example sentence is this. Can you try reading this? It means, I love Japan. It's, Nihon ga daisuki desu. Nihon ga 大好きです
if you want to be informal, you can get rid of the ga particle and this at the end and say, Nihon daisuki, Nihon daisuki, love Japan. Next, from the kanji onna, uman, we get the kanji for safe or relief. The top part means house, so uman relaxing in the house turn into the meaning of relief. Another meaning is cheap. If you're a woman, you probably wouldn't like the fact that woman is used for the word cheap. There are a few theories of the why, but the first meaning of the kanji was just relief, and then from that meaning, the meaning of affordable was added newly. You know, when you see a nice dress, you check the price worrying that it could be pricey, but then when you find out that it's affordable, you feel relieved. Also, the hiragana a was made out of this kanji. So that helps you remember the onyomi for the kanji, an. Okay, so if you want to say cheap, you have to read this in the kunyomi and add the okurigana i. So you read it like, yasui, yasui. Now let's try reading this sentence. It's a question and an answer. I'll give you some time to think. It's restaurant wa yasui desu ka? Ie, yasuku nai desu. Restaurant wa yasui desu ka? Ie, yasuku nai desu. And it means, is that restaurant cheap? No, it's not cheap. If you haven't learned how to negate an adjective, Go watch my Absolute Beginner series video. Next up, we have a kanji for to start. It's haji with the okurigana meru. Haji meru is how we say to start or begin something. People remember this kanji by imagining a woman start being mukuchi, which means to speak little or being silent. You see the top right part looks just like the katakana character mu. And the bottom part looks like the kanji kuchi, which means mouth. So a chatty woman suddenly starts speaking little, as if someone told her to shut her mouth. Yeah, so hajimeru to start. Now let's read this sentence. Before I start a lesson, I often say this to my student. You read as, hajimemashouka, hajimemashouka. It means, shall we start? If you change masu into mashouka, it means, shall I or shall we do something? Hajime mashouka. Next, anshin. Although the first kanji means relief other than cheap, you need to add another kanji to make the word for relief or the verb to relieve. To get the verb to relieve, add suru to do after anshin and say, Anshin suru, anshin suru, to relieve. There is also another word, hotto suru, hotto suru, to mean to relieve. Both are very common. Now let's take a look at the second kanji. This means heart or mind, so the word anshin makes sense, right? Literally, relieved mind. This kanji can be read as kokoro and shin. This kanji was made out of the shape of the heart, and when you google the origin of this kanji in Japanese, you get this image. Yes, textbooks would show this image as the origin of the kanji, and claim that this is the shape of heart. I don't need to tell you what I'm thinking, right? I saw some people tweeted about this too. I had to confirm that it's not just me thinking. Well, the same thing as you do. Anyway, make sure to remember anshin and this kanji. You'll see this kanji in more words related to mind. Also, there was an anime called Kokoro Connecto. I think it was all about their minds connecting, but was too confusing for me. Now, moving on to the next word, Anzen, which means safe. This is an adjective, and the whole form of this word is Anzenna. Again, if you haven't learned what an adjective is, I've explained it in my beginner series video, so check it out. Anyway, the second kanji originally meant there is nothing lacking, basically all. 
it's using a word like everything, whole. When everything is at ease, it's safe. And then, now when we remove the part that looks like a roof, we get the kanji for king. O, or we often say, o sama for the king. O. And when you add the kanji for uman in front, it means queen, female king. And the reading is, jo o, jo o. Queen Elizabeth would be Elizabeth Jo O in Japanese. Next, if you add two lines to the kanji Zen O, we get the kanji for money. The kunyomi is Kane and the Oyomi is King. Maybe think of this kanji as a king's vault. If you want to say money, you use the kunyomi Kane, but you should add the honorific prefix O in front of Kane and say O Kane. Otherwise, Kane sounds rough as a word, and it makes you sound like a mobster. So make sure to say okane, okane. If you, by the way, say king instead of okane, we think of gold. Also, without the roof-like part, it is a kanji for ball, tama. And guess what? If you combine the kanji for money or gold with this kanji ball, it refers to men's crown jewels or family jewels. Yes, king tama is how we say balls, as in testicles. I didn't intend to make this video also immature, but you need to learn these words someday anyway. So there you go, I said king tama online. Now let's try reading this sentence. Something ga hoshi means I want something. So can you guess what this means? It means I want money. And we read it as Okane ga hoshi. Okane ga hoshi. Next, Days of the Week series. This means Friday, and the literal translation would be the Day of Gold. I'll give you some time to think how to read it. It's King Yobi. Kinyobi. Apparently, the Navy people in Japan eat curry every Friday. And if you want to say, I love Friday, do you remember how to say it? We say, Kinyobi daisuki, informally. And if you want to make this formal, say, Kinyobi ga daisuki desu. Just add the ga particle and desu at the end. Kinyobi ga daisuki desu. Now that we know how to write king, gold, we need to learn how to write silver. This is the package of Pokemon gold and silver. We write the kanji silver like this. The left part is the same kanji as king, gold, and the reading is gin. So it's easy to remember. King for gold, gin for silver. The right part originally means to stay. But we don't really use this kanji on its own. This radical appears in a few kanjis. The silver cannot rust and stay beautiful, right? And the correct way to write this right part is a bit tricky. You first write something that looks like the katakana yo, and then knitting needles with hooked ends. After that, do the small line first, then the longer line. But again, you can just write however you want. Calligraphy teachers would be unhappy. But most Japanese people won't care. Next, we'll move on to the kanji good. Once we learn the right radical of the kanji silver, gin, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is add a vertical line on the top of it. Be careful not to put the line on the top of the kanji gin though. A lot of Japanese school kids make this mistake. So when writing good, write the kanji with the okurigana, i. E, but we also often write this word in hiragana. Actually, most of the time it's written in hiragana. But you still need to remember this kanji there. Also, the word kakkoi, which means handsome or good looking, also comes from the word e, good too. Next, combining the kanji for uman and good, we get the kanji for daughter, misume. It's nice to think that a daughter is precious. We'll learn how to write some in a later video. Musume.
Now moving on to the last kanji of this video. This means to eat. The kunyomi is ta and the onyomi is shoku. As the verb to eat, you say taberu with the okurikana beru. Just think of Korean wrap over good food as the roof like part originally means to cover or put a lid on. But some people see the roof part as the kanji for person and remember food is what makes a person good, which is kind of nicer. Taberu to eat. Alright, now let's try reading this sentence. There are kanjis from the previous videos. Do you still remember them? I'll give you some time to think. Okay, it's Kyo wa nani o tabemashita ka? What did you eat today? Kyo wa nani o tabemashita ka? Now we'll just review all the kanjis we learned in this video and you can go relax. Just like other videos, I'll give you some time to think the meanings of these kanjis first. Okay, it, woman, man, child, like, cheap or relief, start, king, all, Money or gold, silver, good, daughter, and eat. Next, the readings. Again, I'll give you some time to think. Alright, uman is onna or jo, man is otoko or dan, child is ko or shi, like is su with the okurikana ki, like suki and ko, cheap is yasu with the okurikana i, like yasu i and an, star is haji with the okurikana meru, like hajimeru. Heart or mind is kokoro o shin. King is o. O is zen. Money or gold is kane o king. Silver is gin. Good is i with the okurikana i. Like i. Daughter is musume. Eat is ta with the okurigana beru, like ta beru, and shoku. I think this video worked really well as I covered what both women and men love. Women love their children or daughters, cheap things on the sale. Men love their family jewels and eating. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video and if you want more videos like this, please share this video with your tomodachi friends. じゃあまたねバイバイ。